Hello everyone and welcome back. Today it's time to get in touch with your body. Since Valentine's Day is coming up, I thought it would be fun, out of the ordinary practice for me to try a tantric yoga sequence. A lot of people associate the word tantra with sex and sexuality, which is completely true and normal. It is very important to work on your sexual health and well-being. It's also more about connection and learning about what your body likes, what it doesn't like, what you're comfortable with, embracing parts of your body that maybe you weren't comfortable with before but are now getting up to those stages. Something that I kind of correlate Tantra with is um, power poses. So if you're going into a job interview, they tell you to look like Superman or stand with your arms in the air just to feel powerful. That's what these moves will bring you in. It could be in your sex life or it could just be in your day to day, just ways of approaching and feeling confident enough to show off your body. It's ours, we own it, we have to respect it and show it off from time to time. <laughs> A lot of tantric yoga practices are done with a partner, today we are just going to be doing solo one. And if all of this tantric talk is intimidating for you or you feel it's a little bit daunting, don't worry about it. Just think of this as a hip opening and a heart opening sequence because that's mostly what we're going to be doing today. But I'll just throw in a couple little things here and there. Learning about breath and breathing and just feeling good in our bodies, which everyone can use a little bit of. So follow me in the sequence. Let's begin. Hi everyone, I'm so glad that you decided to stick around. I just want to preface this sequence by letting you guys know that I don't have any tantric training. It is something I'm interested in and I'm very excited to practice and share this practice with you. Uh, but I just want to let you guys know that I can't guarantee that this will change your sex life abundantly or bring you confidence out in the open. I can't 100% guarantee that, but I do believe that in this practice we will feel more confident and comfortable within our bodies and have a connection that we may not have had beforehand. We're gonna begin in seated position. If you wanna close your eyes, you may do so. We are just going to calm the mind, let go of anything that may have happened today that might be drilling in your mind, whether it's a work problem, relationship. And we're just going to inhale, place our left hand on our heart and our right hand on our belly. So today we're gonna to be practicing a couple breathing exercises and this is one of the most basic. So a lot of people, when we inhale, we actually tend to bring our stomach in and inhale because we believe that's what's meant to be happening, the motion. However, it's actually the opposite. So when we inhale, we want our bellies to stick out and protrude like a little beer belly. And then on our exhales, we want to bring the belly button to spine. So we're going to do some breathing just like this feeling your ear belly as much as you can and exhaling it back inward so we'll do a few of these Now we'll bring our hands to our knees. We can slowly open our eyes, letting the daylight in. So I know a lot of you probably didn't come here for tantric yoga and you're not interested in the sex aspect or you're a little intimidated by it. So if that's the case, then you can just continue on breathing in, in the way that we just did or just regular breath. However, if you are interested in working in a little bit of a sexual manner, then we're gonna take this time to practice some Kegels. So if you don't know what a Kegel is, it's basically a contraction of your pelvic area. So imagine that you're trying to hold in any urine or pee and you don't want anything to come out. So you're squeezing and holding it in. That's kind of the motion we're gonna be doing. You can also imagine that you're clenching the area between your bum and your vagina. So if you wanna do that, so we'll just do a few of these together. If you want, you can hold it for a couple counts and then release, or you can pulsate and just do a few of them in a row. You can also, maybe you're not interested in that area of things, you can also just clench your bum. 
It's always a good exercise. This is something I do even if I'm just kind of watching TV or if I'm driving. It's just nice. You actually get sore from it the next day, typically, depending how long you do it for. Um, so we'll just do some clenching here, whether you're doing ke kegels. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. But whether you're doing kegels or you want to clench your bum cheeks together, anything like that, we're just going to do this together. And if it's easier for you to do this in any other position, say it's easier to do it on your knees, you can do that. However you're most comfortable. Awesome, so thanks for joining me in that. So from here, we're going to come to the long side of the mat and extend our legs out long. Tadasana. And here we're going to grab our left foot and bring it into our inner right thigh. We're going to lengthen, lengthen our bodies up straight. Inhale and exhale, reach towards our big toe. So using your peace fingers and your thumb, you're just going to grasp your big toe together. If you can't reach this far, don't worry about it. You can either bend your knee if you want to do it this way or just reach for somewhere a little bit not so deep okay so inhale and exhale and we're going to keep our gaze at the top of our toe and if you if this is easy for you then you can also bend your elbow to go a little bit deeper we'll inhale come back up Send our left leg out straight. Bring our right foot into our left inner thigh and do the same thing. So inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Again, keep your gaze at the top of your toe. You can keep your feet flexed, active. This ensures no harm in the knee. We'll inhale, come back up. This time we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to grab our left foot and place it in half lotus. Again, keep your toes flexed just so there's no tension here. We're going to inhale, lengthen. Exhale, reach for our toe. So this is just a bit of a deeper version of the same stretch. Again, if you can go a little bit deeper, you can always just bend your elbow. And we'll inhale, come back up. Slowly let your left foot back out, extended. And slowly inhale your right foot back up. Flex your feet. Inhale and exhale. Staring at the tops of your toes. And we'll inhale, come back up. Now we're going to kiss our feet together and clasp our hands over the tops of our toes. This feels really good for me right now because it's really cold in this room. <laughs> so we'll stay here in butterfly pose. If you want to, we can take our thumbs and actually massage our feet. So again, this is just kind of learning to understand your body and what feels good. I know we tend to like it when our partners or friends or family massage our feet, but we have the same capability in ourselves and it's good to practice self-love and self-care. So just massage yourself. Find what feels good. Do each individual toe, roll in circles or you can push whatever feels good for you. Now we're going to push our feet to the side and come back into tabletop position. So a very common position in yoga is cat-cow. 
and we may just go and think of it as, oh great, another cow cow, we do this all the time, don't worry about it. But this time I really want you to feel deep into it and feel it in every muscle that you have, every, every internal feeling that you get from it. This pose is actually quite sensual if you think about it. Your bum is raised in the air, your neck, it's as if someone's pulling your hair back. You can imagine so many different things and it's just, you feel stronger staying in this pose. So keep those things in mind this time and we're gonna move very, very slowly. Keeping the same breath in mind as well where your belly fills up and then in cat, we bring our navel to spine. So we'll do this together. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. So find your rhythm and do some on your own. Make sure your shoulders are away from the ears. You're pressing in all four corners of the mat. You're feeling when you bend your lower back, feel it deep. And then when you forward fold, you're pushing your pelvis forward. You may even have a little bit of a clench in your bum. You notice all these things that when we've done this pose a million times, we sometimes forget. We'll do one more. Great, now from here we're gonna kick our feet back into plank, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog and exhale, downward facing dog. So we'll pedal out the feet. This is the first downward facing dog of the day. Now on our inhale, we're gonna inhale our right foot into the air. And exhale, plant it between our palms. Now on our next inhale, we're gonna bring our Fingers up to the sky into warrior one. Exhale back down. Push our right foot back. Lower down, chaturanga. <laughs> and we'll do the same on the other side. So we're gonna inhale our left foot to the sky. Exhale, place it between our palms and inhale. Warrior one. Exhale, lower back down. Send your left foot back. Chaturanga. Now we're going to inhale our right foot into the air. And this time we're going to bring our right knee to our right elbow. And go down to the mat. We're going to send our left foot back down behind us into pigeon pose. So you want to try and keep your leg as straight as you can in line with the top of your mat. If it's easier for you to stay up here you can do so otherwise we're going to lower down to our forearms. Gazing straight ahead. This is a great hip opener. Try and keep, try not to fall onto your right bum. You want to keep your hips square. Let inhale, come back up. Slowly unravel our right foot. Send it back. And we're going to come back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Now we'll do the same on our left. So inhale, left foot to the sky. Exhale, our left uh, knee to our left elbow. Send our right toes back. Again, try and keep this leg as straight as possible. 
If you want to stay tall and stay up here, you may do so. Otherwise, you can go all the way down to your forearms. Gazing straight ahead, shoulders away from the ears. Breathing into that hip. I'll inhale back. Come back to plank. Chaturanga. This time from downward facing dog, instead of sending a leg up, we're going to plant our knees to the mat. And then we'll come back up. So from here, we're going to do a little bit of a back bend. Some people tend to find that they get dizzy or lightheaded in these positions, so don't push yourself too much. If you feel the need to, if you feel like your vision is going or your ears are popping, anything like that, just relax. You can go into child's pose or do something, do something a little bit more soothing. Otherwise, you can join me in this micro back bend. So we're going to interlace our fingers behind our backs and we're going to inhale our head backwards. So whether you're looking just at the top of the ceiling or the top of the wall behind you, this is a nice chest opener, deep, deep stretch. And we'll come back up slowly. And then we'll sit back onto our feet, relax the hands, forehead to mat, or any pose. Now we're going to inhale back up, come back all the way. <laughs> I used to have a little crack sing song there. Now we're going to attempt to do camel pose. Again, if you have a dizzy tendency, no need to attempt this. If you do want to try but you don't want to go all the way, then another modification would be to take your palms face downward on, on your lower back and slowly look backward. Crown your head to the back of the room. Another tip if you do get dizzy in these moments is keep your eyes open. As long as you're wary and you know what's going on, your body is a little more likely to understand. Um, if your eyes are closed, it's just kind of thrown out of whack and being like, where am I? What, what's going on? So if you want to do that modification, look, hands on the lower back and inhaling your head back. Otherwise, you can follow me into full camel. So we're going to inhale. With our right palm, we're going to grab our right heel. And with our left palm, we're gonna windmill and grab our left heel. And then over time, we're gonna slowly um, fit our full palm onto our full bottom of the feet. So matching each other just like this. This is a very active pose. We're getting the lower back, the thighs, the neck, the spine, shoulders. So we'll breathe here. And slowly roll up. We'll do bunny pose again. So you can put your knees together, arms behind you, and forehead to mat. Inhale, come back up. We're going to send our feet out to the side and come to seated position. If you want to come into the center of your mat. So now we're going to work on Navasana, which is also known as boat pose. So I'll give a couple modifications here as well. If you are new to this, we're going to grab our palms, place them behind, behind ourselves, facing forward. And then on our inhale, we're going to inhale our legs up. You can keep them bent here and just hold. Make sure you don't fold forward like this, but you want to open your chest. Open your chest and radiate. 
If this is okay for you and you want to go a little bit deeper, you can inhale your hands out in front of you. And if this isn't your practice and you've been doing it a long time, then you can inhale your feet straight and hold here. Again, you don't want to collapse and come forward. You want to hold straight with your chest shining to the sky. And we'll just stay here. And we'll slowly release. So from here, we're going to extend our left leg out, fold our right leg so our right knee is pointing to this very center of our mat. And then we're gonna inhale, grab our left foot, sending it behind, behind the right side and stacking it above the right knee. So both our knees are stacked and shooting forward. If this is uncomfortable for you, there's no need to strain yourself. You can just always go into seated position. So from here, we're gonna do another breathing exercise. I will face forward for you guys, just so you can see. You can watch me for the first one and then we can do it together. So our fingers are interlaced underneath our chin and then synchronized with our breath, we're going to inhale, rise our elbows. So inhale. Try and frame the face and get as close to the face as possible. And then we're gonna exhale, close our palms and our elbows and send our head back. So those are both synchronized with the breath. So I'll do one full round for you to see without talking and then you guys can join me. Okay. Awesome, so now let's do it together. Ready? Hands beneath the chin and inhale. Perfect, I love that one. Okay, now we'll slowly unravel. You can use your hands to assist you here. And we're gonna come back onto our backs this time. So slowly get down however you want, however is most comfortable for you. And we'll meet on our backs with our legs bent this way. So if you have a block, I forgot to mention, we can use a block in this position. It's not necessary, so you don't need it, but if you have one and you wanna go grab it, then just pause the video, go grab it and come back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the block between our thighs, just like this. Our hands are to the earth, our feet are close to our bums. And then on our inhale, we're going to go into bridge pose. So we're gonna lift our thighs, our glutes, our stomach, and, and then we're going to squeeze our thighs together to hold this block in place. So we'll do this together. And inhale, rise up. So if you're squeezing the block, then you'll feel this in your pelvic floor, as well as your thighs, and you may even feel it in your glutes. Ah, it can be a little bit difficult, but you got this, you can hold it. And if you want to go a little bit deeper with your arms, you can also interlace your fingers behind your back and open your chest a little bit more. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing. And we'll hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release. Ah, beautiful. This time we're going to inhale, come back up. Slowly. And we're going to do the opposite side of the cow pose. So this time we're going to start with our left knee pointing forward and stack our right knee above. Excellent. Once you're here, we're going to interlace our fingers beneath our chin, and you guys know how this goes now. So we'll inhale together. Do it one more time. Hands beneath the chin. Inhale.
Perfect. Now from here, we're going to unravel slowly but surely. Place our right knee onto the outer width of the mat. Same with our left. Big toes touch together and we'll extend into child's pose. I'm just gonna back up a little bit here. Now we're gonna inhale, come back up. And you're gonna stay in this seated position, but I'm gonna come and face you guys. So stay where you are. Your knees are wide, your big toes are touching. We're gonna spread our fingertips wide and kind of hold ourselves up with our fingers like this. And this is where we're gonna get a little wild. So what we're gonna do together in this pose is lion's breath. If you don't know what that is, this is when you stick out your tongue and let out as much air as you can and be as loud as you want. You can shake it in people's faces. So I'll show you how it goes just for those of you unaware and so you don't feel alone. So we're gonna inhale, fill our bellies. And expel all the air that you can. So it looks silly, it looks crazy, it looks like you could be a maniac on the street hissing at people, but it feels really good and it'll just bring about that power. Even though it looks ridiculous and maybe even feels ridiculous, you also feel strength. Inhale the biggest inhale you can ever possibly do, and we'll let it out together. Ready? For me, I like the going out, out and in, getting as if I'm getting in people's faces. I feel like I'm more intimidating, like I'm a like I really am a lion. Um, so let's try that one together. So inhale. Amazing. So glad that you guys joined me in that. If you didn't, that's okay too, but it is something that I think is actually really worthwhile. I'm the type of person that if I was in a yoga class and people were doing that, I would, I'd hesitate for a second and then maybe give a little, like a little puppy dog. Um, but now I've found my inner lion and I'm ready to unleash it. So I hope you guys were able to do so as well. Now we're going to make our way onto our belly. This is a full, this is a full body thing we have going on today. So now we're gonna move along to bow pose. So we're gonna inhale our feet towards our bum. Grab from the tops of your feet. We're gonna look ahead. And on our inhale, we're gonna kick our feet into our palms and also lift our chest and head up. So we'll do that together and inhale. Hold it. And slowly release our ear to mat. So the more that you kick your feet into your palms when we're doing this posture, the more balance you'll have with your front half of your body as well. So we're gonna do this again. Inhale our feet to our bums, grab the outsides of our feet, look ahead and kick our feet up. And slowly release, putting your left ear to the mat this time. Mm. Now we're gonna inhale and turn onto our backs. It's finally time to relax. Okay. All right. So now we're relaxing on our mats and we're going to slowly inhale our right leg to the sky. If you wanna reach with your toe and stretch it out straight, I can't go completely straight, but do do your best at your level. If you want to grab the shin or even just behind the thigh, you can do that as well. And just hold this. And slowly send it down. We're going to send our foot to the mat. Then we're going to inhale our left leg and place the ankle on top of the right knee. 
and then we're gonna flex our foot, slowly inhale and clasp our hands behind the right thigh. And then we're gonna pull, we're gonna pull gently just to give a nice stretch. So you're gonna feel this in your left, your left bottom side and your thigh. Keep your toes flexed. And breathe. And we'll slowly exhale back down. Release our left leg, extend both. Now we're gonna inhale, grab our left toe or just inhale, straighten your leg above yourself. Again, you can grab the shin behind, behind the thigh, anything like that. And just hold for a couple breaths. And we'll slowly release that foot to the mat. And we'll inhale our right leg, ankle to the top of the left knee. And then we'll slowly inhale, bringing our hands beneath the thigh and gently pulling into your, into your chest, stomach area. Keep your feet flexed at this point. We're just getting a nice stretch in the right side the right buttock and the right thigh, hip as well. And we'll exhale, slowly release. This time we're going to kiss our feet together again at the mat, move our shoulders underneath our backs and we're gonna slowly just massage the thighs. So again, this is tantric yoga. If you want to go a little bit further, you know what to do. Um, otherwise, we're just going to stay here, massaging the thighs, seeing what feels good. And we're going to slowly inhale, pressing against our entire body, pulling up. If you want to go in this area, you can. Otherwise, if you want to stick to the sides, do that. Pull up. Extend, and then you can extend your legs as well. So it's a nice feeling, even when you don't have a partner, but even just to touch yourself, it feels really good. And you can learn so much about your body by just playing with it. My favorite is head massages. So if anyone were to give me a head massage, I would swoon. But we have two hands and we can do it ourselves. Sometimes we forget that. So take this time now to just kind of touch yourself, not even inappropriately, but just kind of rub against your arms. You can rub your belly, help your inner organs. can bring your knees into your chest. Take any final movements you want to take. And then we'll slowly extend our feet. We're gonna actually widen our legs a little bit further because for some people this isn't comfortable. It's not usual in real life to just straddle all the time so it can feel a little bit uncomfortable and we want to we want to embrace this feeling and know that it's okay and there's nothing bad about showing off a little hoo-hoo when you're wearing clothes <laughs> or when you're not so just embrace everything that you you have to offer your body is so unique and everyone feels completely differently in different situations and it's just good to practice and anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, it's good because we're alone, we're doing a home practice, a home yoga practice, you're not surrounded by other people. You could have a friend over doing it together if you wanna do that, but for the most part, this is a solo practice and you have all of this time just for yourself to learn what your body has to offer. So take advantage of that and really 
really just hone in and focus and realize what feels good. So close your eyes, feel no tightness in your jaw, relax, relax your facial muscles, cheeks, your lower back is falling deep into the mat. Thank you so much for joining me and attempting this tantric practice with me. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you do feel that this was beneficial for you, then please leave a comment below because I would love to know if you think it made a difference. Now we're going to place our left hand on our heart, our right hand on our belly. Breathing. We're going to end the practice in this position. So again, I thank you and hope you have a good rest of your day. I hope your Valentine's Day is improved by this. Whether you're single or in a relationship, it doesn't matter. And I will see you again soon. Namaste.